Shh, what's up, guys? And <laughs> ladies. This episode, I'm reviewing Marvel Select Cable from Diamond Select Toys. <laughs> All right, so kicking it off, we got Cable showcased in your standard Marvel Select packaging. And on the side, you got a picture of Cable mean mugging. <laughs> and taking a look at the backside, we got a picture of the figure right there. And a long ass bio. So out of the packaging, Cable's looking badass. Reminds me of the old school, over the top Rob Liefeld Cable, coming straight out the comic book. And on a little random side note, he's smelling really bomb out of the packaging. I kind of got this weird thing where I like to smell the figures when I open them, and he's ranking really high on the snarf scale. Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. Aside from looking just like Ron Perlman, I think it's a really good head sculpt. Even though mine's got some excess paint splatter making him look like he's rocking a dirt lip. Nah, freaking dirt lip! So they sculpted a grip of pouches, ammunition, and buckles throughout the figure. The sculpt looks really nice. The paint apps look pretty solid. The paint wash and the dry brushing is a good touch. He has a lighter and a darker shade of brown for the straps, pouches, and armor. Even though the detail in the paint sculpt on his vest is badass, it's not removable. I mean, you can remove it. Just hit it up with a blow dryer, heat up that glue, be able to pop his head off, force the vest off. But to me, it's kind of pointless. I mean, Cable doesn't look as badass without his armor. I mean, unless you were to do like a custom where you're going to dremel down or modify the armor to enhance the articulation, I do think it's pointless. And that paint wash is pretty much throughout the figure. I mean, you got it on his boots, the pouches, straps, his armor, his booty, everything. And what's cool is that infected arm is detailed all the way to the shoulder. And he comes with a highly detailed figure base. So you got the two peg holes right there. There's some debris. And then you got Strife's cape and his helmet. You rang. And he comes with a grip of guns and a knife. The knife's made of this really flexy rubber. And you can slide it in and out of the sheath located on his backside. I'm going to cut you, boy. He comes with a little pistol with his own little holster. And the little pistol and the little holster can fit into one of the bigger holsters. And you can hold it modern gangster or classic gangster. Man, give me all your money, see? He also comes with dual matching blasters that fit into the holsters nicely. And perfect for double fisting. And these guns are made out of a solid hard piece of rubber. He's got his medium sized blaster rifle. Upon first glance, his gun looked hella cool until I put it into his hand. So I remember in the prototype pictures, it looked like you could clip this gun or peg it onto something, but there's really no legitimate way to do that. Unless you got some sticky tack or something. And then lastly, he's got his big ass cannon. This gun's freaking huge, and it's so huge he doesn't really hold it that cool. And it's made out of a big hollow piece of plastic. His head moves side to side just a little bit due to the shoulder pads. And you get a little bit of neck pivot. And if you want, you can force it and make him look left and right a little bit more. Just watch out for paint rub on his chin. His arms can move up about that much. And they can move front to back just a little bit. He's got a single hinged elbow. And his wrists rotate all the way around. He can swivel side to side at the waist. And no diaphragm or ab joints. His legs move out about that much. And move back about that far. And that far forward. And can swing out like that. He's got mid-thigh rotation. And double hinged knees. And he does have ankle pivot. But it's a little different than what we get with the Marvel Legends. And his ankle could also hinge up and down. And of course he has peg holes. So Cabe's clock's in about 7.5 inches tall. And here he's next to Marvel Select Gambit and Marvel Select Deadpool. Which he is not to scale with. In real life he should be like 6 inches taller than both these guys. And here he is next to the Toys R Us exclusive Strife, which is supposed to be his clone, so again, he's not to scale with him. And a Toy Biz Bishop, and an X-Force Deadpool. So I am bummed he doesn't really fit into scale with some of the figures I wanted to put him in with, and his upper body articulation's garbage. Regardless, I'm still glad I picked this figure up. The overall paint detail and sculpt is amazing, and with a couple of tweaks here and there, I mean, this figure would have been top notch. But I'm still glad to put him in my collection. Thanks for watching this review. Subscribe, check out some of my other videos, and we'll see you next time.